Okay, then, here we go. Get that door open. And push this out. Oops, catching on some wires there. Mm, looks pretty big. <laughs> the never ending wine of the lawnmowers. So I have to seal those back containers still. Whoops, it's heavy. All right. So almost set to depart on an almost three week ride bike packing. I hope the bike can take the load. We'll see. Um, so I'll be covering it on TikTok mostly, although it eats power, so don't expect a lot. So the first bit of excitement on this ride. There's a bit of a tree across the trail here. I tried to help him. He was cutting it, but, uh, you know, he just has a handsaw. It just wasn't working. So they're going to go get the chainsaw. I've already... Well, I've arrived at my first campsite on the Great Adventure, and here it is. Whoops, try not to do that. So there's the tent set up. The uh, people next door gave me some firewood, which was really nice of them. I really appreciated that. There's kids screaming in the distance. It's a family campground, but that's okay. So, and you see the bike, the bike survived. I survived. Now, there's no food here, <laughs> so um, I bought some mixed nuts in Metcalf, so I'm not completely without food, and they sold some ice cream, so that was supper. Uh, and I found an, uh, an old granola bar in the bottom of my bike pack, so that's good. And uh, so, day one, in the books. Well, good morning. It's the start of day two of the great bike packing trip, and here I am in Sleepy Cedars Family Campground, which is actually very nice. Uh, it's just south of Ottawa, so look for it. Uh, here's my bike repacked, and it's been done a bit more efficiently this time. The tent, instead of being in the front bag, bad spot, is now in the back bag, good spot, because it's lighter than what I had in the back bag. Uh, what have I forgotten? I forgot bug spray, I forgot anti-chafe, and I forgot a toothbrush. Go figure. And uh, there's people walking by. Um, and uh, also I broke my self-inflating pad. I have to try to fix that. Okay, I'm in Kempville. I had to make a detour here to get a new uh, sleeping mattress and I ran across a, a market. So, we'll just have a look around the market. Because why not? You have to follow this like one way, so. <laughs> so this is pretty nice. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Thank you. This is the canal side of Burritt Rapids. It's my last village before I reach my campsite up on, uh, I forget the name of the road, but it has the word hill in it. Um, so, as you can see here, uh, it's a circular bridge. It's also a popular area for people. The Rideau Canal was created because we wanted to make sure that we had a way to get from the lakes to Montreal without having to go on the St. Lawrence River. So we built a canal because, you know, you don't think about that border between the United States, but 
at one point the United States thought Canada should be part of it. And so that's why this canal exists today. Here's supper for today. I actually brought food this time, just to be different. Uh, I got it from that Kemptville market that you saw a little while back, and I carried it on the front of my bike in a plastic bag. So I've got tomato salad, and uh, they threw in some free hummus, so black olive hummus, so bonus. Um, that's It was a container of blueberries, now it's a bag of blueberries, and a couple of tomatoes. So a meal fit for a king. So what have I learned on this ride so far? Uh, well, let me see. I learned that it's hard to stop and take photos when you're fully loaded. And I haven't been taking photos with my camera, only my phone. So that's a pretty good lesson. I'm in Merrickville. It's just down the road from Burrits Rapids, maybe 13 kilometers from my campsite. And as you can see, there's, it crosses the uh, Rideau River. It's an old mill town, quite old. It's been here for a long time. Very, it's pretty, very picturesque. I remember Merrickville because when I was 17, I had a dust up with my father. Sorry about the big truck. There's a lot of traffic here as well. And took off on my motorcycle a supper one day. Went past Smith's Falls. Tried to camp out for a night. Couldn't get a fire started. Freezing on my motorcycle. I came back and warmed up in that store. It's closed at the moment, but you could go in. It's still there. I'm still here 45 years later. Took me three days to get here, but I'm finally on the trail. There's the trail. There's the trail behind me. And I'll be on the trail for another two or three kilometers, then I have to detour again. Okay, excuse the mess that is my campground. I'm here at Murphy's Point Provincial Park, and as you can see, it's just beautiful here. And I went, had the best shower ever uh not lots of nice hot water great pressure and oh it felt so good did another 70 kilometers on the bike today uh didn't intend to but i uh, underestimated how far this park is from the track that i was taking so that's why i had to take the detour was to get to this park anyhow uh i got flip-flops because I need flip-flops to walk around the camp. And uh, I packed the camera far away. <sighs> Having a great time. Can't believe it's only three days so far. Um, talk to you on day four. Good morning. This is what it looks like that I'm waking up to today. Can't complain about that. It's Murphy's Point Provincial Park. Beautiful, beautiful place to wake up. Sorry, I'm spoiling it with my my table litter, but uh, I'll leave this site nice and clean when I go. I have a much shorter ride today. Google Maps says it's 24 kilometers. Yay. Uh, I won't lie. This has been a really hard trip so far. A, a couple of 70 kilometer days in the, in the uh, sweltering heat will do that. I got lots of insect bites mosquitoes and black flies I guess for the most part um, I need a multi-tool um, and that's about it for this morning enjoy another day another lock on the Rideau Canal you can see these boats getting lower and lower and lower locks are brilliant they fill from up they're closing the gate. I had to show you one where the people were working there. 
<laughs> and this is lock number 36 or 35. Somewhere behind me there, there's another lock, and this is the uh, Newborough Lake, and I'm staying in Newborough for today. Got really bad news today. Uh, I've lost one of the cables that connects the CPAP battery. I use a, an Air Mini CPAP so that I can breathe on the road. Anyhow, I can't charge that battery. <laughs> They're proprietary cables, of course, because it's medical equipment and they can't play nice with the rest of the world for some obscure reason. So anyhow, I'm going to have to change my plans. Uh, I'm going to go, I still have one working battery, um, which lasts one night. So I'm going to go camp tomorrow, then the next day I'll be in Kingston and I'm probably looking at a train ride home. Such is life. Okay, now that I've completely unpacked everything looking for that cable, this is a good time to do a gear video. So, this is, I'm in this uh, motel room. This is the gear that I took with me on my bike packing trip. So that's the CPAP with the battery and the cable is missing from that assemblage. And that's the container for the CPAP. This is sleeping earbuds being charged at the moment. Other charging cables, because I like my electronics. Camera charger, I'll put over with the camera. Uh, hand sanitizer, which I haven't used. Uh, water purification kit, which I will use tonight. Uh, these are all elements of what might be called the ditty bag. Spork, mosquito repellent, camp suds, razor, carabiner to carry stuff, toothbrush and toothpaste, emergency tape, and a spigot from a smart bottle. Pills, because I'm old. <laughs> Wallet, more for the ditty bag, polysporin for mosquito bites. Battery banks, and this charger is for this. I thought I would do some writing on this trip. Never happened. <laughs> Um, seat protector for the bike for when it rains, that worked. Poncho, haven't used it yet, probably will. Uh, camp towel, which is in the tent bag, and there's the proper bag for the camp towel. Mask, here's the camera, dead weight, haven't used it at all, just too much trouble. Clothing, hat, biking gloves, photo gloves or cold weather biking gloves. Two pairs of biking shorts, you need two pairs. Socks and underwear. This is a sweatshirt, <laughs> heat wave, haven't needed it yet. Uh, pajama kit, um, two light t-shirts, uh, very recommended to have two. And a heavier one for if it's cold, yeah, heat wave, never happened. Bike repair kit and pump, just a uh, collapsible water container. Um, <laughs> sunscreen, and I forgot my chamois cream, so I have Vaseline, rookie mistake, rain pants and rain jacket, stove set up, here's the fuel, here's the stove itself, and this setup has worked pretty well, the fuel fits right in here, and then all the stuff on top of it, this is the holder, always pack your lighter with your stove, and there will be a part two, because there's still a little bit more gear and then I want to do some reflections. Alrighty, this is the gear video part two. I'm still in the hotel room and, you know, swipe up or down or whatever for part one. Uh, so flip-flops, horrible, horrible things. Bring proper sandals next time. All right, so there's the sleeping bag and various components of the tent. The uh, ground sheet and then pegs. Don't forget your pegs. Bags to hold the tent in, which I didn't use. And here's the tent itself, all kind of crumpled. Here's the uh, the rain fly. 
This is my pillow essential, and this is my new sleeping pad. And all of that goes into goes into the right bag, and it all fits in there um, because it collapses really easily. You can just mash it all in. Everything, well, not everything, but other stuff goes in the other bag. So, um, yeah, sleeping bag, I got that. And so here we can see this. Um, so all the bike repair kit stuff and this emergency stuff goes in this bag, which attaches to the seat. Um, coffee stuff and rain jackets, those go into this front bag. And here are the tent pegs. Um, oh, also I forgot it's my trusty water bottle with a plug for into it, remember them? <laughs> and this is my water bottle holder. Oh, I really like that. My helmet with uh, helmet earbuds. Yes, I have two sets of Bluetooth earbuds and that way I don't need to mess around moving them around. I also have a couple of straps here to strap stuff on. And this is my other battery for my CPAP. It works pretty well, but it's only good for a night and it's monster heavy. But the advantage is I can just plug it in with a real plug. So at least I get to camp tonight, right? Uh, so the clothes are all packed in <laughs> my freezer bag, my humongous freezer bag. And this is the rest of my packing bags. Hint, don't do this. They're indistinguishable from garbage bags. Get proper bags. So anyhow, the ditty bag goes in a freezer bag. That goes in the back part of the bike over there. And that's it. I'm back on the trail at last. Some 24, 48 hours after my detour, I'm back on the trail. Just, uh, there's a highway just behind me there. We will ignore that. I've got, I don't know, 26 kilometers now. Uh, basically undisturbed Canadian Shield territory. Okay, no, there's a, there's a pit stop about seven kilometers in. But after that... Uh, and the main thing is I'm back on the trail and I'm not leaving it again. Going to the provincial park was a wonderful, wonderful diversion, but it really took me out of my way and uh, added a resuming lot to ride. the trip. So <laughs> resuming ride. Resuming ride. And this is at Chaffee's Lock. H2O Canoes, the URL on it is FrontenacOutfitters.com. Looks like a uh, fun. Well, I have no idea how I would get over there. It looks like a bit of a, a jump, but doesn't that look like the perfect campsite? Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, there's nothing here, just me. 
in my bike. <laughs> And something. Chicata ing. I don't know what. And on this side, massive granite cliffs. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty nice. It's a porcupine. Pausing ride. It doesn't care about me one whit. Why would it? That, my friends, is a beaver. There's another one in here too somewhere. And they come together for a little kiss. I'm at the Escarpment Rest Stop on the Karakui Trail in between uh, Sydenham and Harrowsmith. It's a nice spot to sit and relax for a second, take stock. Just a few kilometers up there will be uh, where I turn off the trail and go down to Kingston. So, uh, bittersweet. Um, bitter because I had a much longer ride planned, but sweet because, boy, am I sore. <laughs> it's been a tough ride and, uh, you know, made harder by all the hills going to the provincial park. But, you know, it's it's really been a learning experience. I had a really nice time last night kind of uh, doing some stealth camping because the spot that I paid for was inaccessible. But this is a nice spot and there's a nice little trail here or you know you could pitch a tent but don't tell anyone I told you. It's the Tim Hortons at the end of the trail. My bike and I have cycled from Castleman to Kingston that's like Ottawa to Kingston only longer and now we're getting a nice cap. Okay, this is the last of the videos from my great bike pack trek of early August 2021. Notice how specific I am, just in case there's one from later August of 2021. I've got baseball from Iowa on TV. Perfect. And something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, while I've been on this trip, well, one thing, water. <laughs> oh, it was so hot out there. Like, there were heat warnings every day of my bike packing trip. It's crazy. But also, also, equally, if not more important, and please don't let me struggle with this before the video ends, pizza! Pizza! Oh, yes. I'm on my way to Kingston to resume the great bike packing adventure. Here I am at the train station in Kingston, picking up right where I left off on the great bike trekking adventure. And there goes the train. Well, I didn't expect that I would be here today. Camden Lake Provincial Wildlife Park. Which means that in the fall, all the hunters come here and shoot ducks and geese as they go by. But other than that time, it's really a really nice place. Very quiet overall. A few hikers have been through. Some people with their dogs. Quite fun. 
and I'm here and prepared to spend the night here, so somewhere back in the trees. Um, found my CPAP cable, if you're wondering what's happening. It was located at one of the uh, campsites I stayed at. So I picked it up on Sunday, and today I took the train, or no, I didn't take the train. I drove to the VIA station in Kingston and then cycled 48 kilometers to get here. Paradise. I'm in the little village of Yorker. It's on the Napanee River, which you can see here. It's an old mill town from ages ago. Well, by ages ago, I mean the 1800s, for those of you who are in Europe. It's a nice place. Uh, as always, there's car traffic in the background, but what are you gonna do? So last night I stayed at the uh, nature reserve I was all alone it was beautiful this morning I woke up it was a mist all over everything and uh, so of course everything became damp right away but you know it's day eight on the great bike packing track I didn't expect to be this far it's all a bonus to me For some reason, there's no barrier or anything stopping people from going out on this dock. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the uh, campsite in Prince Edward County, Ontario. This is the Bay of Quint, or Quinte, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And we have some very annoyed birds by the dock there. There's no real beach here, but that's fine. It's a real nice little lake scenery, bay scenery. I don't know. I uh, cycled just a shade under 60 kilometers to get here. Coming down from the uh, campsite at the other lake, down the uh, Cataraki Trail, then through Napanee and over a big bridge to get here. I'm in a village called Konsekon, or Konsekon, something like that. It's on the west side of Prince Edward County, which really pretty much resembles an island except for a small isthmus right near here. I cycled across uh, about 50 kilometers in the heat up and down hills on the roads, and it was pretty brutal today. You can see I wounded my cap. Uh, so here's Kanseikon. This is what I was trying to get to, and there really weren't very many services or anything. There was a, uh, a cafe where I got some coffee and some water and some croissants, and a store across the way, which had afterbite for my 50 or so mosquito bites. This is the Trent Severn Waterway. It's a canal that separates Prince Edward County from the rest of the mainland and in my opinion makes Prince Edward County an island. So, uh, I was thinking about what are the really important things that you need when you're on the road cycling like I am and the first thing I think has to be water hot day like today, I'm getting maybe uh, 20 kilometers per liter. Uh, you might be able to do better, but uh, you know, it's pretty hard. Uh, another thing, sunscreen. Um, without it, you'd burn to a crisp. Third thing, very important, uh, mosquito repellent, or in my case, afterbite. 
so oops I don't want to do a 15 second video oh never mind it's not going to be okay so while I was recording the previous vehicle some guy started shouting at me from the other side of the bridge and then the barrier came down and the red lights came on this is one of those uh forget what they call them they basically they rotate out of the way so that boats can go through I don't see any boats anywhere but I don't know so, a little excitement. Now I wonder, if, no, there it goes, there it goes. It's rotating, folks. It is a bridge that's rotating. And I assume there will be a boat coming through. I very carefully went to this side before I recorded videos. So, Back to where I was before. I've arrived at my campsite, by the way, and yeah, instant noodles in a pot. The dish that is worth making. <laughs> uh, so about 75 kilometers, easily the longest of my bikepacking trek so far, and it will remain the longest. I'm not going to make one longer. Anyhow, um, so the important things are water and protection from the elements and protection from you know other species in this case mosquitoes you know and i watch uh, survivor man quite a bit and he goes through the same sort of thing i guess food would be the next one although it's quite a bit lower down on the list you know the lack of the first three will kill you in a hurry food takes time although it sure is nice to have As much as I would like to linger today, and I really would like to linger, this is a, a really nice area, um, I need to hit the road pretty quickly because it's scheduled to be 32 degrees um, and even warmer with the Humidex, obviously. I want to avoid that if I can. I only have a 42-kilometer ride, but it's... Um, on the highway and it's probably going to be largely uphill so i'm just going to enjoy this site for a little bit longer while i can and then get on the road well just as quickly as i can to avoid that heat so i'll give you more once i get up to my next spot meanwhile here's my tent As much as I would like to linger today, and I really would like to linger, this is a, a really nice area, um, I need to hit the road pretty quickly because it's scheduled to be 32 degrees um, and even warmer with the Humidex, obviously. I want to avoid that if I can. I only have a 42-kilometer ride, but it's... Um, on the highway and it's probably going to be largely uphill so i'm just going to enjoy this site for a little bit longer while i can and then get on the road well just as quickly as i can to avoid that heat so i'll give you more once i get up to my next spot meanwhile here's my tent I'm in what turns out to be a fairly noisy Ferris campground. It's near uh, Campbellford, which is directly north of where I camped last night, about 50 kilometers as it turns out. The attraction isn't the river as I thought it would be. No, it's that Ferris is located on a drumlin. For those of you who don't know, a drumlin is a large teardrop-shaped hill created by the melting of glaciers. Um, glaciers would basically push up a whole bunch of dirt and sediment, and then as they melted, they would lay down these teardrop-shaped hills. So I had to cycle up this hill, down this hill, up this hill, down this hill to get here. Whew. It's hard to see from the video, but 
That's a brilliant red sun setting over the drumlin here as I wrap up day 10 of my bikepacking trip. And, you know, when I set out, I guess it's two weeks ago now, uh, I didn't expect the main challenge of my trip to be the heat. It's been like 30 degrees, give or take a degree, for two weeks straight. Something I've never seen before. Uh, and certainly did not expect, even in August, even in Ontario, you know? And I've had other challenges, bug bites, water, the list goes on. But the heat is the thing that I'll remember most from this trip. Something to think about as the world burns. I'm at the Campbell, or yeah, the Campbellford Farmers Market here in Campbellford, and uh, as you can see, it's not huge, but you know it's been bigger. So I've just polished off a big blueberry pie and a blackberry refresher, which was delicious. I got it there, and then I'm gonna go in here. But the main reason I'm doing this TikTok is, as I was sitting here, just kind of looking at that tower over there, which looks pretty cool, an osprey carrying a fish flew over and disappeared off that way somewhere. And I thought, that's pretty surreal. Oh, there goes my stuff. Just sitting here and an osprey flies by carrying a fish. Because why not? As much as I would like to linger today, and I really would like to linger, this is a, a really nice area, um, I need to hit the road pretty quickly because it's scheduled to be 32 degrees um, and even warmer with the Humidex, obviously. I want to avoid that if I can. I only have a 42-kilometer ride, but it's... Um, on the highway and it's probably going to be largely uphill so I'm just going to enjoy this site for a little bit longer while I can and then get on the road well just as quickly as I can to avoid that heat so I'll give you more once I get up to my next spot meanwhile here's my tent I'm still in Campbellford and I'm down at the lock. I've been touring around town because I'm taking a zero day today. Yay! That means no riding. Well, no non-recreational riding. I'm just puttering about town with no load on my bike. Here I am at the uh, Trent Severn Lock and uh, I guess it's called the Campbellford Lock. There's actually two locks here. It's a big one. Look at that. And uh, I was earlier, I was able to look down. It goes deep down into this valley here. So it's pretty cool. I really like Campbellford. Uh, and it's not just for the world's largest toonie. I mean, that's kind of a, a low bar. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, traditional Ontario, friendly, small. It's just perfect for me. This is the Ramney Suspension Bridge, also here in Campbellford, and oh, yeah, now that the water level has risen. There's the gorge the down lock there, is and there are the falls. Here, it's all I'm done by machines. No chains. Not to drop for the anything up. because if I do, it goes straight down and is gone. Uh, there's an old factory. Let's see if I can show that to you back there. This used to be a center for uh, wool production, cloth production. Uh, and now there's a, a power plant there. There's a really steep drop at this point. You probably saw it with the uh, video I did for the uh, for the locks. We're all this is all part of the same system here. And that up there, well, you can't really see it, is the Drumlin where I camped a couple nights ago. 
and these are kind people passing by. Hello. <laughs> Well, I'm back on the trail again, and uh, as you can see here, it says the Trans-Canada Trail. But I'm wondering if I haven't abandoned this part of it. Uh, unlike the other trails that I've been on, the trail that runs through Campbellford, I was up on the other side of the town as well, uh, is also used by ATVs. And this is what an ATV does to a trail. Look at that, it just grinds it to dust. It pulls up big stones like this, and uh, I haven't picked the, the best spot here to show this, but it digs ruts and very large potholes. Uh, you know, I, I'd really like for everything to be able to, uh, you know, share the trail, but ATVs make the trail something very different from what it was, and it makes it very hard for bikes to use. Just saying. Getting a little rain. Rain. Am I putting on my raincoat? No, I am not. It's kind of a wider part of the trail here. Not as bad as it has been. Still kind of bad. But I'll take it. I'm just outside of Marmora. Home of the iron mines, I assume. Oh, and that seems to be it for the rain. <laughs> it wasn't a very long rainstorm. Thought I'd share the sound of it with you and hope that that's what you got. You know, when I was planning I this trip, part maybe. of the thing I was saying to myself is that Achoo. this there would be like go. a dream vacation for people uh, who weren't on from TikTok. around here because of video places quality I'm going. at its best. Now, I tell you, ride. hasn't worked um, exactly. Like anyhow, I'm that. about uh, uh, 35 or great. almost 40 kilometers the into my ride. Doing really well, except for the rough. Boy, oh boy, look at this. This is Callahan's Rapids. It's it's on the trail. Here's the old bridge. And uh, you can cross the Resuming bridge. Resuming ride. Uh, and here's an ATV coming across the bridge. Look at this. This is just a gorgeous area. There's a few people here because it's one of the hotter days of the year. They've just parked their boat, gotten out of their boat, put their chairs in the river, and they're set up for the day. Pausing There's ride. a bunch of other people doing other things. A bunch of other people. Maybe a ten. An otherwise completely empty. I'm about ten kilometers into today's ride. I came down that trail from Marmora and it continues on down there and that's the trail I took yesterday. This, in fact I was at this intersection yesterday and when I hit it I turned off to the left to see that conservation area. This trail, this north-south trail that I'm just leaving is the Hastings Heritage Trail. I won't regret leaving it to be quite honest. It's shared with ATVs and it's pretty chewed up. They're big Resuming potholes, ride. or you know, it's it's rough. I'll just say that. This is the Trans Canada Trail that I'm going on to. Now that bit there that I took yesterday to the conservation area wasn't too bad, and we'll see what this is like. It looks good so far. Okay, as you can see, it's definitely not fall. It's uh, late August, which is, you know, months before fall. But as we look at these trees over here, it seems like fall, which is pretty wild. Uh, they surround this pond here, and this pond is an interesting little thing. Uh, it burps something every once in a while, but myth may be methane. But even more interesting is, and let me zoom in here as much as I can, it is teeming with fish, little fish, they're not, they're not huge, there's a group, there's another group over there, and uh, I don't know if I can get close enough to show you them, but, so that's really cool. Well, I've arrived at my last campsite, for my great bike packing trip. And this isn't exactly it, this is just down a little trail, but this is part of it. Uh, I've been adopted by the camp dog, uh, which should make some viewers smile. 
So here's what it looks like. A nice woods here. Dog's name is Spirit, by the way. And it's a she. So pretty nice. Had a 30, whoops. <laughs> Don't want to fall down the hill while I'm recording a TikTok. <laughs> 38 kilometer ride, rough trails again, uh, which is disappointing. Um, heat, warning level heat. But now I'm done and I'm here. So I'm happy. Just a little bit more of a camp area. You can probably hear the mosquitoes. <laughs> Well, it's my last day on the uh, great bike packing adventure. This is uh, Huntington Hun Huntingdon Trail. Some brilliant pronunciation there. Uh, on Strava, it's called Trail of the Two Lakes, but uh, on the trail, it's called Huntington. Uh, we'll see how it is. It looks medium rough. Uh, yesterday wasn't so bad, but my problem is I put a new seat on the bike. That's great, but it raised the height of the seat a couple of inches. I did not raise the handlebars at all. And as a result, I've been leaning into the handlebars a lot more than I should, especially on a rough trail like this. And <laughs> boy, it hurts. <laughs> uh, so I'll get that fixed for next time. Another lesson learned, make sure your bike fits. pretty hard to make any progress when you keep seeing sights like this. This is where two trails converge. That one goes to Campbellford and points beyond. That's the one I just came from. You see why they call it Trail of Two Lakes? They're still trying to figure out how far things are on the other. Well, I have no idea how I would get over there. It looks like a bit of a, a jump, but doesn't that look like the perfect campsite? Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, there's nothing here. Just me and my bike. <laughs> and something. Chikata ing. I don't know what. And on this side, massive granite cliffs. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty nice. It's a porcupine. Pausing ride. It doesn't care about me one whit. Why would it? My friend is a beaver. There's another one in here too somewhere.
come together for a little kiss. I'm at the escarpment rest stop on the Karakui Trail in between uh, Sydenham and Harrowsmith. It's a nice spot to sit and relax for a second, take stock. Just a few kilometers up there will be uh, where I turn off the trail and go down to Kingston. So uh, bittersweet, um, bitter because I had a much longer ride planned, but sweet because boy, am I sore. <laughs> it's been a tough ride and uh, you know, made harder by all the hills going to the provincial park. But you know, it's it's really been a learning experience. I had a really nice time last night, kind of uh, doing some stealth camping because the spot that I paid for was inaccessible. But this is a nice spot and there's a nice little trail here, or you know, you could pitch a tent, but don't tell anyone I told you. <laughs> 